Hi, you guys. We're getting ready for Monday Maybes. I'm going to get started here in just a minute. I'm so excited that it's Monday. I love doing these Monday Maybes. <laughs> Let's see. Welcome, 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 welcome. Hey, hey Tia, how are you? It is Monday, maybe. We are so excited. I am excited that it is again Monday afternoon, 9 p.m. This is Coach Deanna Morris. I am here for Monday, maybe. This is our third week of Monday, maybe. You know that stuff that we always say we're going to do and we don't get around to doing or we put it off and we'll say, well, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next year. I'll do it Tuesday. Well, how about let's just do it now. Let's stick to making sure that we stop putting things off to Monday. Maybe I'll do it Monday. When we say maybe I'll do it Monday, we never really go back to do what we said we were going to do. So I'm so excited to have you guys here tonight. Don't forget, share this and share it with your friends so that we can get some of this valuable information out on Monday maybes. So this is our third week of Monday maybe. We have one more week to go, which is next Monday at 9 p.m. This is Coach Deanna Morris of Life Seeds Coaching and Developing Firm. So I am so excited. We're going to dive right in on tonight. I know. Let's go back over. We always do our recap. So the first week for Monday Maybes, we talked about procrastination and the things that cause us to procrastinate and not accomplish our dreams and our goals. So one of those things, we had three topics. It was fear of failure, disappointment, and that thing of perfection, always thinking that it has to be done just like we wrote it down. It doesn't always happen that way. So that's what we talked about the first week of Monday. Maybe we talked about how procrastination is the biggest thing that stops us from doing what we say we're going to do. We set goals and we don't accomplish them. And this is the time that we got to get busy and accomplish those great things. But tonight we're going to talk about passion. You got to figure out what your passion is. You'll be distracted if you don't have a, a, a passion. You'll be uh, uh, complacent if you don't have a passion. You don't even know what that thing is that you like to do. So it'll cause you to be complacent and not do anything. So on the first week we did, we talked about procrastination and uh, um, the, fear of the, the fear of failure being one of the things that causes us to procrastinate. Disappointment causes us to procrastinate. You know, it didn't work out the way we thought it was supposed to work out. So we got upset and we put it down. We talked about that thing of perfection, always thinking that it has to be done the way that we wrote it down on paper. And most times it doesn't work that way. It does not happen the way that we wrote it on paper. And that's no reason to stop and go, maybe I'll do it later. No, stick to it. Stick to it. Stick to it. Those were the things from week one. So week two were about was about accountability and setting goals. You have to be accountable. You need to set a goal and you need to do it. Don't wait till later on. And that's why I decided that I wanted to do these maybe Mondays because we all do it. We all put it off and say, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next month. I'll do it later on. We don't know whether we're going to have next month. We don't even know if we're going to have next week, tomorrow, the next hour. So I'm really big on this thing. And I keep saying that there's so much potential in the grave. We, that means that people leave this earth with all of these talents, all of these gifts, all of these abilities that we never got to see happen in the earth and it's gone. It's nothing else. I don't want to be that person and I don't want you to be one of those people either. So I want us to get busy and doing what we're supposed to do. So last week, week two, we talked about accountability and setting goals. Remember, we started talking about the throwing the spaghetti on the wall. So that's where I'm headed this week. This week, we're going to talk about our passions. What is passion? Do you know what you're supposed to be doing? So I got a couple of questions that I'm going to give you tonight to help you kind of develop and think about what is it that I'm supposed to be doing? How am I supposed to do it? Um, where do I start? Where do I begin? How do I even know what my passion is? Well, the first thing I want to do, I want to read something that I thought was so interesting that I found today about passion. Passion may be defined as an inclination or desire to do something one likes to do or thinks is important. 
We are all in search of happiness, which is so often tied to life's passion and doing what we were meant to do. Our passion is what we want to do naturally. Remember I talked about that? Our passion is that thing that we want to, we'll find ourselves doing it in the middle of the night. We'll find ourselves, if we were homeless, if we didn't have, if we were just anywhere, the passion is that thing that you find yourself doing no matter what. If you're sad, you'll do it. If you're lonely, you'll do it. Somebody's passion may be singing. Somebody's passion may be cooking. What is your passion? And here's the other thing about passion. It's not what others want you to do. It's not what others want you to do. It's not what you think people want you to do. It's the thing that you love to do. What is your passion? What is that thing that gives you the most uh, gra- I mean, the most gratification? I-, I tell people all the time, my passion is to talk. I just love to talk. I like to help people. And I like for my talking to be impactful. I like to tell you something that maybe you didn't know or give you another angle on it that's going to push you to the next level. So, okay. Passion, 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 passion. What is your passion? Got a couple of questions for you tonight. What do you love to do? What's that thing that you love to do that no matter what, where you find yourself, you mad, you angry, you sad, you find yourself doing it. Do you know that one thing that you love to do is marketable? That one thing that you like to do, if you like to listen to music, If you're just a person that loves music and you love to share music with other people, that's marketable. How do I know it's marketable? If you love music and you are so caught up on music, you know every artist, every singer, and somebody's saying, well, I want to have a party, but I need a a list of songs for this kind of occasion. If you're a music lover, do you realize that you can put music together, do a compilation, and get it to somebody? That's a service that you can get paid for. Every passion that we have is marketable. We just have to find people that know we have to connect to the right people that can help us push our passion. The first thing that we have to do is figure out what it is. What is that thing that you naturally do? Is it hair? Do you like to do hair? Do you find yourself doing hair? Even if the people don't pay you, you're like, well, I'll do your hair anyway. I know some people like that. She's, she happens to be on the line tonight. <laughs> do you have, are you that person that loves to cook? You just love to feed people. Do you know that that is marketable? You don't have to have a, 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 a food truck. You don't have to have a restaurant. You could just start cooking in your home and selling dinners. That is marketable. Talking, do you know that talking and being a speaker is marketable? It is marketable. Take your story, take your testimony and share with people. That's how you find your passion. Here I go with this whole throw the spaghetti on the wall thing. Listen, throw the spaghetti on the wall till something sticks. If you don't know what your passion is, just start doing a whole bunch of everything. Things that you think you like. Some things we don't try because we don't know whether we'll like them or not. So we miss out on... Um, just the, the idea that we might be successful at it, like for an example, this is an example and I'm always transparently sharing, um, me and my husband's business. But anyway, my husband shared with me some years ago that he always wanted to play the bass guitar. And he said, since he was like 12 years old, he wanted to play the bass guitar, but he had never taken the time to invest in getting a guitar uh, during that time, I don't think he's, he even told his parents that he wanted to do that or told his mom that he wanted to do that. So when he shared this with me some years ago, well, my thought was, if you want to do it, just try it. So I went out and I bought him a bass guitar. He's been plucking it ever since, but it's a passion. It's something that he wants to do. He can't say that he never had a chance to do it because it's something that he took the initiative, even though you sometimes have to be the person to push a person into what they think they want to do. The only way you're going to determine whether you're good at it is if you try it. So I'm really, I'm really big on try it. Throw some spaghetti on the wall and see what sticks. If you like writing, start writing. If you like teaching, start teaching. If you like doing makeup, start doing makeup. Even if you don't stick with it, try it. You don't know what will stick. I have a young lady that did my makeup for, um, we'll come to that later, for the article that was released um, this month. She loves doing makeup and she does it for herself. She has these beautiful videos of makeup, but guess what? She had not done anybody's makeup, but her own. 
And she is very, very gifted in this area. So when she did mine, guess what my thought was? Girl, let's get up. You got to make some money. You got to make this thing marketable. You got to get to going. You got to get a business going. You got to do what you're supposed to do. That's how you find what your passion is. There are some things that I've been doing for years that I just honestly didn't know that it was a passion for me. I just thought it was just something that I like to do. I like to, um, I like to write. I like to write stories. I like to... Um, Tell stories that help people overcome. I like to talk. So what I've learned to do is take all of that stuff and put it together and make it marketable. I like to talk. So why am I not doing lives like this to help somebody? So my first question is, what is it that you love to do? What do you love to do? What do you, what, what is it? Is it cooking? Is it hair? Is it dancing? Is it singing? What is it? It could, I mean, even down to those that, you know, you may like reading the Bible. And if that's so, that's good. But you can do, you know, you can teach Bible classes. You may like to um, plant flowers. I don't have a green thumb. Nothing in me is green about a thumb. But guess what? I know people that like that. I like flowers. I don't know what to do with them, but I like them. You have to make that passion uh, marketable for you. And there's no reason why it won't work for you if it's a passion. And when it's a passion, it becomes it comes easily. It comes naturally. You never know what you're capable of doing if you don't try. That's right. That's right. You won't know what you're capable of unless you try it. So here's another one of my questions for you tonight. Are y'all taking down these questions? Come on, give me some, some hearts, some likes, or something to tell me that you're taking this stuff down. Listen, the first question was, what do you love to do? Number two is this. What are you good at doing? What do you do that you know you're good at? That's how you find your passion. What are you doing that you know without a shadow of a doubt? Listen, nobody has to pat me on the back. I know I'm good at doing this. And so when you know you're good at doing something, you will do it and you'll do it with ease. And then it makes it marketable. If you have somebody, listen, when you have a talent or a gift and you know that you're good at it, you don't quite know what to do with it, find somebody, get a coach, get a mentor, somebody that you see doing what you like to do. I have a lady that loves to clean. Not my area of expertise. I mean, I'm, I keep a clean house, but that ain't my baby. That ain't my passion. Cleaning ain't my passion. But that's somebody's passion. Do you know that people will allow you to come in and clean for them for, for uh, and pay you to do it? And you enjoy it. You enjoy being there to take make sure people's houses are clean. But guess what? It's a passion that's marketable. We have so many gifts and talents in us that we're not utilizing. And it's all because we don't know how to market them. We don't know what to do. And guess what? It goes back to week one, the fear of failure. Nothing beats a failure if you, you, you got to try. Throw the spaghetti on the wall. Did it stick? If it stick, keep doing it. Keep working it. Keep making it happen. Listen, here's the other one. What's the most important and essential thing in your life right now? Is it your finances? Is it your family? Is it your health? Is it your children? What is it? Supporting and, and, and encouraging. Listen, if you are an encourager, do you know if you are an encourager, you can change somebody's life? It, listen, there's no reason if you are an encourager that you don't have anything to do. There are plenty of hospitals. There are plenty of nursing homes. There are places that you can go and speak. You don't even have to go. You can go in a grocery store and see a cashier that's having a bad day and brighten their day. But you have to find purpose in what you're doing. Find your purpose. Find your purpose. We all were put on the earth to do something. God did not create us to just walk around and be mediocre. There's greatness in all of us, but we have to move forward in it. What are you born to do? You were created with purpose. With so much purpose. Here's the thing. It says your passion. Is that desire to do something that is important to you. It's not contingent on who likes it. It's not contingent on who doesn't like it. It's contingent on what you like to do. But you have to get out of that place of fear. You have to get out of that place of, of thinking that it's going to go A, B, C, D. I have to go back to week one. It won't always be perfect. You may start at F and then go back to A. But keep working your passion. Keep working your passion. It will work if you work it. I, I want to share this um, 
uh, uh, y'all know I'm transparent. So anyway, um, for the last two Mondays, I made a commitment that I was going to do Monday, maybe Mondays. And it's been so, so weird that every Saturday, Sunday night or Saturday, something comes up or Monday morning, something comes up that would cause me to not do these sessions and make me say, well, you can't do it. You don't feel good. This is not a good day. Don't put your body through the strain. But I make a conscious decision to be consistent. When you have a passion about something, you will be consistent. You will work it even. That's what I told you earlier. Listen. When it's your passion, you can be sick and still try to do it. When it's your passion, you can be without any money and still find a way to do what you're supposed to do because it's a passion for you. Yeah, um, uh, I see uh, Prophet Scooper, you say you love facilitating change in people's lives. And guess what? Even when you don't feel good, I bet you up doing it. Some of y'all, give me, tell me what your passions are. What is it that you like to do? I know I see some people on here. I think, Lakeisha, I know your jewelry is your passion. I know the bacon is your passion. What are some of the things that you like to do? Because sometimes you don't know. So how do I figure out what my passion is? What is that thing that you like to do? Some people don't like to uh, be around people, but they can do administrative things. That might be a passion for you. But you have to figure out what is that thing that is going to work for me? And not only is it going to work for me, but it's going to make me happy. This is what the statement said. We are all in search of happiness, which is so often tied to our life's passion and doing what we are meant to do. Let me tell you, I have worked many jobs, many jobs, and I don't, you know, I've enjoyed some of them. I'm good at them, but it doesn't mean that it was what I love to do. But when you find your passion, that means that that's that thing that you are absolutely in love with and you'll do it no matter what and i think that i I found my passion in speaking and i found my passion in writing and i found my passion in coaching and mentoring it is what i love to do without a shadow of a doubt and it's such a great time to be able to collaborate them all and bring them all together but until you figure out what's that thing you like to do you may not walk in that happiness let me tell you, the worst thing that you could ever do is find yourself in a job, working a job Monday through Friday, nine to five for the sole purpose of meeting your bills when there's a great talent and a gift on the inside of you that can bring you income. And it's not just about the money, but it's also about that place of peace and happiness. You may like working with children. If you like working with children, find a, a resource, a coaching, a mentorship program. And then here's the other thing. Sometimes the resources that you need for your passion are so available in your community. There are grants, there are opportunities, there are scholarships that are available for the different things that we like to do. But the problem is we don't tap in because we're afraid to take the first step. So yeah, we're still here talking about maybe Monday. Not putting it off to Monday. You know, we always say, well, I'll do it next week. I'll do it next month. No, we don't have that time promise. Remember what I always say, there's so much potential that's in the grave. But guess what? We can't do anything with that potential because it's gone. And I don't want to be one of those people that take every, I want, when I leave this earth, I want to know that everything that was in me, that God gifted me and placed in me, I have poured it out. And that it's a legacy that I'm leaving something for people to live by. I don't want to be an inspiration anymore. I want to be impactful. Remember I told you when you, in, when your inspiration is for a little moment, you give people a hype and they feel good. But when you're impactful, it's longing, it's lasting. They still think about it. I remember when the lady said this, and I remember when the lady said that, and it makes a difference. It makes you get up and do something. I remember some years ago, I met uh, a coach and um, gosh, her name won't even come to my mind right now. But I met this coach and she had no, she has no arms. She has no arms. And she was talking about how she had written some books. And at that time I hadn't written my first book, but I wanted to write Tawana Williams. That's her name. I wanted to write my first book. And I was like, I had said I wanted to write a book by the time I was 40 years old. And I spent that day with Tawana while she was doing a speech and talked about the things that she had experienced in her life. And it was so impactful to me that I went home and I was determined. I had, I think I had about six months. I am going to complete my first book. I'm going to do what I'm supposed to do. If she can do it, I can do it. And even now when I have situations and circumstances that arise, I think about her. She overcame so much and it wasn't at a time 
that we had so much that was available. I think it was during the 60s, the 50s and the 60s that she was going through her, her disability and all of those things. But she made, she accomplished something and she's inspiring. Not only is she inspiring, but she's impacting people. She impacted me so much that I finished that book and I often think about her. I am determined that I will not leave with potential that was un, un, untapped potential. So we have to do that. So tonight, yeah, I am, I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. I'm pushing you. Tap into what is that thing that you love to do? What is that thing that you were created to do? That is your passion. If you're stuck and don't know how to quite get there, call me, text me, inbox me. I'll let you know. I'll help you walk through the process of finding what is your passion. Because guess what? You can go through life and work a nine to five and never be satisfied, never be happy, never be fulfilled. But I'm coming to learn when you get to that place of fulfillment in your passion, you will accomplish greatness. And I know that we all have greatness in us. So I'm so thankful for you guys being here with me tonight. We're talking still on Monday maybes. So next week. Is our final week, I think, for Monday, maybe, unless something else drops in my mind about Monday, maybe, and maybe we can extend this a little bit longer, but right as of right now, next week is going to be the last Monday, maybe, for a while, but anyway, I'm so, I'm so grateful for you guys sharing with me on tonight, taking the time to be with me, but I want to share a couple of things, you know, I wouldn't be able to share with you about maybe Mondays if I had not experienced it. I've experienced where I put things out for so long and, and said I was going to do this and said I was going to do that and just did not do it. And then I got to this place after I had the triple bypass last year. For some of you that don't know, I had a emergency triple bypass open heart surgery. And when I came out of the surgery, I was doing great things. I was pastoring. I was ministering. I was doing all of these things, but there was another part of my life that I wasn't fulfilling. And I was like, there's more to this than there's another side of this that I'm supposed to be accomplishing. And once I got to the place that I was okay with, it may not look like what everybody thinks it's supposed to look like. It may not look like you. It may not look like theirs, but this is the direction that I know that I'm supposed to go in. Once I accepted that and realized this is my passion to touch people in every capacity, not just in the sanctuary, but outside in the marketplace as well. Once I did that and started moving and it's so many doors open because I found my footing, I found my passion and it will happen for you. If you find your passion and begin to work it, it will happen, which leads me to share with you. Um, so the first edition, I don't know if you guys, I hope you can see that. It's uh, Who Am I magazine. Richmond came out this week and I am uh, part of the magazine. My story is in the magazine and I'm so excited. There are many locations that you can pick it up from. So excited about that. Can y'all see that? It's all about prof, uh, Coach Deanna Morris. So not only did that come out, but I wind up using, I wrote an article for another magazine that's coming out next month which is Girl Me Too Magazine. Listen, if you've been on my Facebook page or my Instagram, lifeseeds.grow, you'll see all of this information. So I am so excited about what's happening, but I believe that it can happen for you too. So listen, stay in touch with me. Follow me on Facebook at lifeseeds.grow. Follow me on Instagram at lifeseeds.grow. And you can find me on the web at www life seeds with a s c d f dot com life seeds c d f dot com this is coach deanna morris i believe that we're on the brink of something great your passion is right around the corner but you have to embrace it go back and listen to some of the um maybe mondays from last week and the week before and it'll fill you in on some of these things share this with your friend listen those that are going to watch the replay, thank you so much for taking the time to come and sit and listen and share. I'm telling you, hey, hey, Brianca, listen, I, that's one young lady. I am absolutely proud of her. She's doing some awesome and some amazing things. The magazines are here in Richmond. The magazine came out in Richmond. It came out in North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee. And if you want a copy, send me an inbox and I'll tell you some locations. If you don't get a chance to get it, I have a few on hand that I'll make sure you get. 
And I just thank you guys for being with me. I don't like to hold you long. Have a terrific rest of your Monday. I'll see you next week for maybe Monday. This is Coach Deanna Morris of Life Seeds Coaching and Developing Firm. Have a great evening.